Good morning, Tom with Knife Delights here. I just wanted to take a moment to uh, acknowledge that it's Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day is a day that we honor the sacrifice for those who have served us, those who have lost their lives, or perhaps now they have passed on. We owe a lot to these ladies and gentlemen that have given their lives, help us to be secure in our freedoms. Generation after generation from the Revolutionary War on down. And even yet today they serve. Standing on the front lines. Keeping us safe. You can, you can sleep well at night knowing that they're out there protecting you. I wanted to share a couple of short stories here. As you all know I'm a Civil War buff. So I, I take kind of take my stories from the Civil War era. But, again, this could be from any war. The, the letters uh, that you read and the history that you read, whether it's a Civil War battle or a battle from World War II, they, they read a lot the same. But I, first I want to start with one of my relatives. And his name was William Henry Mason. Now, he was actually a, a brother-in-law or a, an in-law of mine. He married, uh, the, his sister married one of my great-great-grand-uncles. Uh, but uh, the Masons were originally, or were from Post and Kill, New York. Um, well, here's the letter. There are pieces of it missing that I can't quite make out, but you'll get the gist of the letter here. So this is William's father writing to William's sister, Eliza. And it's from Post and Kill, New York, June 23rd, 1864. Dear Eliza, it becomes my painful duty to inform you of the death of your brother, William Henry. He was killed on the 2nd of this month. He was killed in a charge at a rebel battery at Cold Harbor, Virginia. He fell mortally wounded and died a few moments later. He was a dutiful son, was a Christian. He has gone to a better and happier world. It seems to me that sometimes as if I had lived too long to see my last and only son snatched from me. It is more than a heart can bear. The day before he was killed, he made on his, and I believe it's uh, that he told his friend to write a letter uh, to his family if he was to be killed. If he was killed to write to us and to let us know, he wrote to us that he is no more. Take care, can't write much at this time. This is your father, Henry Mason, to Daniel C. and Eliza Carpenter. You can just hear the pain in his voice. We'll go to another little story here, and this uh, involved one of my great-great-grandfathers, and he served with the Iowa 34th Infantry. And he participated in the Battle of Pleasant Hill, which was part of the Red River Campaign in Louisa, Louisiana in 1864. Now, it was a two-day battle. So the first day, the Union forces got routed and they, they fell back. And then on the second day of the battle is when the Iowa 34th had participated or engaged. The Iowa 34th was a veteran company or a veteran regiment. They had been fighting many years. They were, you know, veterans at this point of up to three years of war. They knew what they were doing. They didn't turn tail and run. They were experienced and they fought. And because of that, the 34th with a couple other uh, regiments in the battalion, they were placed in the center of the line. And that's, that was an honor because that's where you always put your best troops in the center of the line. Well, anyway, the Confederates came across the field, attacked. And the Union uh, forces were forced to fall back. There was a messenger sent to the 34th to inform them to fall back. Unfortunately, that messenger was killed on the way, and he never got his message delivered. So the Iowa 34th soon realized when they looked to their left, and then they looked to their right, they were out there on their own. There was no one covering their flanks. They ended up in a situation where they were surrounded by Confederate forces. So the Iowa 34th had to 
fight their way back through the Confederate lines to get back to Union lines. So this is a letter written by Captain Michael Ackerman, and this is, they're talking about um, the day of the first battle. They had gotten the word back that, uh, you know, their comrades had been defeated and, and were falling back, and they were discussing this situation. And so it starts out here on the evening of April 8, 1864, at the Cemetery of Pleasant Hill, several officers were standing together discussing the events of the day. The 17th Corps had been defeated and retreated into our lines, demoralized and badly used up. Colonel Mix looked up and said, There, I see the moon over my shoulder. According to the old saying, it is a good omen and I need not worry. Of these officers, just 24 hours later, Colonel Mix was dead, Captain Miller, Captain Peebles, and Lieutenant Howard were mortally wounded, and I was left on the field for dead with two severe wounds, one bullet through my left knee and another through my right hip. How we formed a line of battle on April 9th, how we stood our ground until nearly half of the regiment was wiped out, how Company A went into battle with 34 men in line and only five answered to roll call the next morning. I need not tell. You have that in history. So the Iowa 34th took over 40% casualties that day. If you'll give me just a moment. I will relay, relay one more uh, little bit of piece of information here. I want to read another letter here, or another piece of the history, and this just kind of exemplifies the horrors of war, what happens in war, and of course with the American Civil War, there were a lot of relatives ser serving together, and there's actually a lot of relatives on opposing sides. But again, this is the Battle of Pleasant Hill. Uh, this portion of the third Iowa 34th history was written by E.V. Moore. And he said, at the, at the time of the advance of the enemy, enemy upon our lines, I was on the skirmish line with others, about 40 rods in advance of the regiment. Some rebel officers showed themselves in our front on the opposite side of the open field. I fired at them, and they immediately disappeared into the brush. In a few moments, the enemy's cavalry came out of the timber at the same spot and formed for a charge. Almost at the same moment, their infantry opened upon our regiment, across the corner of the open field to our left front, which was sufficient hint for the skirmishers to fall back. This was done in some haste, after delivering their fire, from which two of the enemy fell. The cavalry charge upon the right of our brigade uh, very soon followed. Upon reaching the company, I dropped into a shallow and dry depression, and while regaining my wind, I heard the sharp crack of a rifle, saw the smoke rise from a treetop, heard a thud in my rear, and glancing back, saw Matthias Hutchison sink back without a groan. His father went to him, raised his head, but immediately laid it down, saying, He is dead. I think he was shot through the heart. After the first repulse of the enemy, he was carried back, I think by George Williams and James Baldridge. In all of the charges on our line after the death of his son, Captain Hutchison encouraged us by his voice and his example, taking no thought for himself. When the last charge had been repulsed, and the enemy had passed us in strong force on both of our flanks, Colonel Scott came to Captain H. and told him we were completely cut off from the main body of our army and asked if he had any suggestions. Captain H. replied, Let us stay right here. Does that not exemplify bravery, honor, courage? The man had just, just lost his son, and yet the only thing on his mind was his troops and helping them get through the battle. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment, say a prayer for those families that have lost a loved one, say a prayer for our nation, and most of all, let's remember our, the sacrifice of these veterans. I'm going to put a link to a video I did on my sister channel, uh, History Delights, 
and it is a tribute to the unknown dead of the Civil War. And in that video, I kind of tell a pretty ex exciting story about what could be considered the very first Memorial Day here in America. So until next time, everyone, God bless, and have a very delightful day.